Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it an incredible one. Today I'm going to share with you the most realistic method to create a packaging mockup or any kind of mockup in Photoshop. You see, each design is different. Yes, you can use mockup templates and we have made videos about it. But if you want the most realistic results, you would have to treat everything a little differently. But don't worry, once you understand the concepts, it becomes super easy and super fun to do. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to download this photo or any of the assets to follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do here is to prepare the base. As you can see, this tote bag has a lot of color in it. There is a yellowness here. This area is a bit desaturated. We have to make it all uniform. Also adjust the brightness a little bit. For that, let us create a selection of this. And again, this is not a masking tutorial, so I already have a selection. Also, I'm going to give you a PSD with the selection as well. So let's go to select load selection and then channel tote bag. I already have saved it. Hit OK. Here we have the selection ready. Now with the selection ready, let us first of all create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choosing hue saturation. As we place the design, we want the design to have its original color and not get sidetracked by this color right here. So let's take away the saturation. Now you can take away the entire saturation, but I recommend leaving a little bit of that in for more realism, maybe minus 64 seems to be a nice number. Now you can also do some brightness and contrast adjustments and one of my favorite ways of doing that is using curves. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now most of it we can modify later. Just let's do a little bit of that. This much seems to be fine and again according to the design you will be able to modify this later and I recommend that. By the way, you can copy the mask right here or let's make a group of both of them. Select the first one, hold the control or command, select the second one, both of them are now selected. Now press control or command G to group them. And you can name this group base preparation. Let us open this group and copy this mask, actually drag it and drop it onto the group so that you don't have a copy of the same mask for multiple layers and that is good practice. Otherwise, you will have some issues around the edge. Anyway, let's create a mask for this just to make it look uniform, that's all. Now the next step is placing the design. I have a pattern for it and a logo for it which will be very familiar to you. So let's go to our finder. You'll be able to download all of this by the way. So let's drag and drop the pattern. Keep in mind you can use any pattern of your choice. Hit enter or return. Now let's drag and drop the logo that we are going to use which is the Photoshop logo. And this is fine for now. Let's place both of them in a group. Select the first one, hold the control or command, select the second one, control or command G. Now we want this to be limited to the tote bag area, right? So let's hold the alt key or the option key. We already have the mask. Click and drag and drop it right here. Now, of course, this is not the design we want. So let's open this group. You have all the flexibility. Select the Photoshop icon, press control or command T, hold the alt key or the option key and resize it according to your wish. I'm going to place it right about here. And this seems to be all right. What do you think? Let's keep it that way. Hit enter or return. I also want to introduce a stroke. And again, this is absolutely optional. Your design decisions, whatever you have to do. Keep in mind, you are the artist. I'm just here to share ideas. Double click on the right hand side of this layer. And then just check stroke. This stroke is already fine. Position on the inside, color white. You can click to change the color to whatever you wish. I'm going to keep it white. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And we are done. Once you have placed the design however you want it, now it is time for us to blend that with that of the surface. There are many techniques to do it. I'm going to share with you a technique that works brilliantly. Let us select the Photoshop icon and also hold the control or command. Click on the pattern, select both of them and then press control or command G to put them in a group. The first thing we do is change the blend mode of this group from pass through to multiply. Multiply is a blend mode which darkens. So we are using the concept that this tote bag is already a bit brighter. So whatever painting is going to happen there is only going to darken it. So we changed the blend mode to multiply and it's already looking fantastic. Before we move any further, it is important we keep everything organized. This is the multiply group or darken group, however you want to name it. And this group is for the entire 
design. Now to really blend the design with that of the surface, we need to create some displacement. And again, there are several ways of doing that. You can manually do it with Liquify. There's a filter for it. Now, since this design is mostly flat, there are not many huge ups and downs. We can use the automatic filter. Let us zoom in. And as you can see, these don't look real. For that, we need to first create a displacement map. Just select the original image layer, right click on it, and then click on duplicate layer. In this case, we will choose a new document and you can name this displacement whatever you wish or just leave it untitled the way I do it. Sorry about it. Now let's desaturate it. Remove all the colors by pressing Ctrl or Command, Shift and U because we only want the bumps. Now if you want, and this is an optional step, if you don't want all the pixely bumps here and there, so much jaggediness, I don't know how to explain it, but you get the idea. You can also blur it just ever so slightly. Let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Depending upon how much ups and downs you want to keep, you can increase or decrease the blur amount. I'm gonna keep it to one because I really want that texture in my design. And now let's save it. Keep in mind, we need to save it as a PSD. Let's go to file, save as, and let's name this displacement. You wanna make sure format is set to Photoshop and click on save. Now you can close it. Let's open up the multiply group here. And first, let's apply it to the Photoshop icon. With that selected, let's go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. You can decide how much displacement you want. For this one, I'm gonna go four and four, four horizontally and four vertically. You can always double click on it to increase or decrease it later. Hit OK. And we are going to choose the same displacement that we just saved. Click on Open. You see that displacement created all throughout, looking so darn realistic. Similarly, we need to do the same for this design in the background as well. And again, we don't have to repeat the entire process. See the displacement smart filter that we just applied? This was already a smart object. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag and drop it right there to the pattern. And it's automatically applied to the pattern as well. Now, so far this is looking okay, but we can do better. You see, whenever we print something on a piece of fabric like this, it is not that sharp. It's slightly blurred, so we need to blur it as well because if you zoom in, this is way too sharp to be existing in the real life. So let's apply a bit of blur by going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. One pixel is fine, hit OK. Similarly for the Photoshop logo as well. By the way, you can change the order of displacement and Gaussian Blur to see what looks good to you. So this is what it looks right now. Let's change the order. This is how it looks with the changed order. You need to decide what works better for you. Now for the Photoshop logo again, I'm gonna hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag and drop the Gaussian Blur here so that we don't have to repeat the entire process. Now here's the problem. The blur is applied all throughout, but it has not been applied here. Why? because we are applying this stroke live. It is not being applied over the stroke. So what do we do? Let's go back, let us not apply this Gaussian Blur. Let's drag it and drop it to the trash can. Let's select this entire layer and convert it again to a smart object by right clicking on it and choosing Convert to Smart Object so that it is non-destructive. At the same time, the smart filters are also applied and inside of it. Let's go to Convert to Smart Object. Now that they're applied, let us apply the Gaussian Blur again. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag and drop it here. Now, this looks so darn much better, but the blur may be too much. So let's open this up by clicking on this arrow, double click on Gaussian Blur, and let's apply a radius of maybe 0.6. That is slightly better. Now this is looking incredibly good. Now that we have done Multiply, which is catering to the dark areas, here's the before, here's the after, but what about the bright areas? What about the shine? We need to do that too. So it's time for this tote bag to shine with screen. So with the multiply blend mode selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. This is going to look off. Now change the blend mode from multiply to screen. And with that also change the name to screen. Now we only want to keep it in the bright parts of the tote bag. Now our instincts will tell us to double click on the right hand side of the layer, use blend if, but the problem with using blend if is that it also takes the design into consideration. We only want it in the bright areas of the tote bag. So how do we do that? We do that by using channels. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the original layer just to keep that on and everything off. We want just the tote bag image. Now let's go to channels 
and let's pick the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. See which one shows folds the best. If you look at blue, this has more dimension. It has all the details. So let's hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail of the blue layer to create a mask based on that. Now let's come back to layers and you can click elsewhere to activate everything or you can just click on RGB inside of channels to activate everything back in. Come back to layers. Now that we have the selection, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the eye here to turn everything back on. And with the screen group selected, since we only want to keep it in the bright areas, click on the mask button. It is already looking fantastic. See, here's the before. The bright areas are just non-existent and here is the after. So much better. But again, it is also a little bit on the dark areas. We need to control that. For it, let's select the mask. And if you just want to see the mask, you can hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask. Now let's apply curves or levels, your choice, to keep it only in the bright areas. Yes, I am in Mesh and this time let's apply curves by selecting the mask and pressing Ctrl or Command L. Let's take the middle slider to the right, like so. This looks the most natural here. You can also play with the left slider. This looks pretty okay. I think I'm gonna go with this. Hit okay once you're satisfied. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask again to bring back everything. Now I want a little bit more brightness, so maybe let's go back here. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it again, and just for the visuals, Control or Command L, and maybe we're gonna bring a little bit more back here, like so. This looks more like it, hit OK. And now hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it again. You see the bright areas? They become so much better. Now we are already getting there, but there are some fine tuning we can do to make it even better. You see, each color is different. Each surface is different. Each material is different. So it's going to shine differently. Some areas will have more light, some areas will have less light, and you have the entire control over everything. For example, if we take a look at the Photoshop logo, I wanted a little more light coming in in the dark areas. So what do we do? We open up the screen group and just above the Photoshop logo, we are going to create what? A curves adjustment layer. With the Photoshop layer selected, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. We want this to be limited just to this layer. So let's click on this button. Now we are going to brighten the dark areas. So let's take the point on the left hand side and just bring it up. You see that? This is instantly becoming so darn much better. So I'm going to do just a little bit of it, not too much. Otherwise, it will look a bit faded. This is fine. If you want to add more blue to it, let's go to the blue channel and also let's bring it up slightly. Let's come back to the RGB channel and let's increase that slightly as well. Now, I also feel that this bright area is way too bright. You can control that too. We need to make it darker. So let's go to the multiply channel, multiply group actually. Inside of that, just above the Photoshop icon, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves again. And this time limit it again by clicking on this button. And let's make the bright areas darker. And which side are the bright areas? In curves, right hand side. So take the point on the right hand side and just take it down like so. And just by doing that, it becomes so darn much better. You can also experiment with this and see what it does. Maybe slightly make it faded. I leave that decision to you. I'm gonna keep it this way, I think. This is fine. Now, of course, you can also experiment with the pattern. So let's select the pattern layer and above it, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Limit it just to the pattern. So if I take the rightmost point down, this is how it looks. Actually, that looks more realistic. Honestly, there is no limit to what you can do. Let's close it. Let's organize back everything. Let's close this multiply layer. Here we have the design ready. So far, what do we have? We have the original tote bag. We have the base preparation. And on top of that, we have the design. But is it ready? Well, not really. There are so many other optional things you can do to enhance the design, the overall image even more. The first thing I would really love to do is to boost the contrast. For it, at the very top, click on the adjustment layer icon and again, choose curves. And let's take the right point, right slider to the left, like so. We don't wanna lose details, so let's keep it right about there. This is nice. Now, to make everything brighter without losing the details, you can also create one more curves adjustment layer. And this time, let's take it up overall. Just take it up like so. And let's remove it from the bright areas. And you already know how to do this by double-clicking on the right-hand side of the layer. 
and taking it away from the bright areas, like so. But again, this is going to be harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all apart. Hit OK once you're satisfied and then again double click on it to go back to the properties and you can control how bright you want this to be. I'm going to keep it this way and this just works for this one. Now, another thing you can do if you want to be absolutely really realistic and you're very nitpicky about it is that you would notice that in real life in the shadow areas, the colors are a little less. In other words, the saturation is quite lower in darker areas. So we need to do the same here. How do we do that? Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. This time, we want to target the dark areas of the tote bag, not the entire design. And we can get that mask from where? channels. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on this layer, this background layer. So only this one is visible. Now let's go to channels and let's select the blue channel because that's what we used before, right? Hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail of that to create a selection based on that. Now let's select RGB back again, come back to layers and turn everything back on. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on this eye again. You know what? I shouldn't have created the hue saturation adjustment. Once this is active, then once you create a hue saturation adjustment, it comes with that mask. Anyway, I don't want to edit out my mistake, so here it is. Now if you take down the saturation, the saturation goes away in the bright areas, opposite of what we wanted. And just to see which areas are being affected, I'm going to do something. Let's decrease the lightness all the way to the left hand side. Now let's select the mask press Ctrl or Command I to target the dark areas. And again with the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command L to bring in the levels. And now control where you want to decrease the saturation. You can also use the middle slider and this slider as well. Wherever black is, those areas will be affected. Hit OK once you're satisfied. This is how it looks. Now let's come back to hue saturation, reset the lightness by double clicking on the slider and now take down the saturation. Now it begins to look more realistic, you see? Here's the before, here's the after. Let's go with minus 60. And again, we only wanted it in the tote bag area, not overall. So I was wondering, can we bring this layer inside of the design group to keep everything easy and organized? I think we can. Let's open up this group, just drag it and drop it above the screen group. And it works equally the same without destroying the background. And there, my friend, you have it. A super realistic mock-up, super fun to create, and everything is adjustable. I recommend that you take a break after creating all this. Look at it after a while. Don't be too excited to post yet. Let's have some patience, because when you get back to it, you will start to see certain mistakes or certain things that you should have done. And that is the advantage of working non-destructively. For example, if you feel like we needed to make the tote bag a little darker. Let's open up the base preparation group. Inside of that, let's open up curves. Maybe we do something like this to make it more exciting. Maybe we drag it down from here. So it's all up to you. Whatever you wish to do, you have the entire flexibility. Everything is non-destructive. So that's how to place designs the most realistic way. The very first thing we do is base preparation so that when we place the design, the original colors of the surface doesn't just seep in. And we did that here by creating a hue saturation adjustment layer and decreasing the saturation. If we hadn't, the original colors would just seep in and it doesn't look right. We can also brighten or darken the base using curves. And we put that in a group. After that, it's time for the design. And for it, majorly, we have two groups. One is multiply for the dark areas, one is screen for the bright areas. And we use the multiply blend mode to just paste the design nicely. We can also use displacement maps and Gaussian blur to make sure that it just blends in with the surface. And we used the screen for the bright areas for that shine. And after that, we also decreased the saturation for the dark areas to make it more realistic. On top of that, we can do some finishing touches to brighten the entire design. That's up to you. You can keep it like this. You can keep it like that. Your call. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?